okay. and people always ask, well, can I get, can my animal come back to me? I'm sure they can. And I'm sure they have every intention of doing that. I just can't say they will, because maybe that's not the animal that you need for your higher good, for your higher growth. Mm-hmm. Like you, you always get, you always, it's like babies, right? What um, family that they're born into for whatever their growth is for, but um, you may not get what you want, but you always get what you need. Welcome to The Reluctant Medium, where we cover the gamut of out there conversations. With an open mind and a curious heart, we want to talk about it all, from psychic phenomena and energy medicine to beings from other star systems and out-of-body experiences. You'll find a great balance between grounded science-backed topics and others that science hasn't quite caught up to yet. I'm your host, Dr. Maria Rothenberger, a psychotherapist by trade and a reluctant spirit baby communicator. And hey, even though I'm a medium, I'm not buying everything folks are selling. I just have a voracious appetite to know more about what I call the world of the weird. Join us on your favorite podcast platform or watch on YouTube at The Reluctant Medium. I'll see you there. The Reluctant Medium is part of the Ethereal Network. Here's another podcast you may want to check out. Hey, you. Yes, you. Are you looking for a new podcast that appeals to your scientific curiosity, but is also a little bit spooky? Show me how I died in a past life. Well, look no further, because this cat is where it's at. He had concerns about the ethics surrounding AI, feeling they had achieved consciousness. Curious Cat Podcast examines the shadowy space where science and the supernatural collide. Listen every week with your host, Jennifer Holtz, as she and her guests explore what it means to be a soul in a meat suit. We were healing karma together. They were all kind of predestined to to resolve something. Listen on all your favorite streaming apps and continue the conversation on Twitter at CuriousCatPodCA or find Jennifer and all her links at Jennifer L. Holtz, spelled H O T. ES.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to the Reluctant Medium podcast. I have been just dying to have somebody like today's guest on, on this show because, oh, I mean, I, I am in the world of fertility and I believe that our animals are our children. And so to have somebody like Nicole Harp today, I am stinking delighted. Welcome, welcome, Nicole. Well, thank you, thank you, and thank you, Maria. I, it's a pleasure <laughs> to be on. I, I can't wait to talk about art and animals, all things art and animals. My two callings, two most important things in the world to me. Well, and nature, but yeah. Yes, and we're going to talk about how they all go together too. They completely go together. Well, I would love to know. I mean, I I teased a little bit, but do tell what titles do you claim or how do you identify and what do you do for a living and how did you come to do all this? Uh, There's a lot of questions. Uh, So, well, I don't, you know, we only have an hour. No, (laughs) right. Uh, The only, the title thing, I don't know. I am, um, I've always been an artist. I've, um, I graduated from VCU. It's like, it was top third in the nation then. Now it's like top two. So, um, you know, it's great art school. Um, and I've always loved animals and I've, and I've always been a painter and I've always asked, how can I help animals? And not to get into my bio or anything, but I've always worked in shelters. I did the physical shelter work. And then I brought home always, always around animals as a kid, always bringing home like a lot of children and just fearless in their face when I probably shouldn't. And I got bitten a couple of times, but I'm like, whatever, (laughs) but just uh, always ask, what can I do for animals? And again, I worked physically in the shelter, but then I was like, I just can't be around all the death. It's visceral and I'm a vegetarian. I can't eat them. I not animals, dogs and cats. I mean, don't get weird, but no, what I mean, I I don't, anything with the nervous system. So I'm vegetarian, but I'm just being around that all the time in the shelters with the euthanasia. I I was like, I can serve in another way. Everybody's got a kind of altruism or altruistic give the way they can. And I could raise money. So I did a lot of events and things like that. And then I just, as an artist, I built something for the zoo where this like quarters for conservation game. And then I did fundraisers. And then I built this eco dog where it's a 
I'm just giving you the short short, but it's an all green sustainable dog watering station that takes water from downspouts and uh, puts it through the natural plant biofiltration, the plants, and then that goes down into a barrel, like a 55 gallon barrel, a solar pump, a pump that's driven by solar, sends it back up, waters the plants, and then sends it clean to a dog watering bowl. And they were in cities and it was solar. It's innovative. The outsides were gorgeous being an artist. But anyway, so that was during the pandemic that I had to close that business during the pandemic. And right about that time, a couple before the pandemic, I was really tapping in. I've always read, I've always been able to read handwriting or like the energy of handwriting. And I think I don't know. You can tell me when you kind of felt your mediumship, but I think as you start working through your stuff, your shadow side and your, then this stuff starts becoming more, I mean, you can't deny it. And I've always been intuitive. Um, always. My partner's always, I always listen to you because you were always right. Damn, you were always right. So uh, not always right, but what I mean, when you talk about people, you get to feelings. And so, but anyway, so then I, I started with people doing the psychic and I was like, mm, hmm, people love them. But, I, and I was like, kept asking, what could I do more for animals? And it just kind of morphed right into animals. And I've done hundreds, almost a thousand communications for animals. So I've been doing it maybe five years, but I paint and I do that. So I don't stop talking though. I'll let you talk because we could, we, we could talk about what I do, but anyway, that's, that's kind of how I got into animal communication. Yes. Oh my gosh. And it's all combined too. even the nature work that you've done. It nourishes animals and creates more. It's just a lot of creation. A lot of creation. Second Uh, chakra stuff. I mean, I will say something about that eco dog. It was more engineering and I'm not an engineer. So I I work well, but I do work well with others. And but then she works well with others. And I my the engineers had to help me with the moving parts. Oh, I want this to make noise. I want this to light up. Not the eco dog, but the zoo game. But it was three or four steps out of my comfort zone but we came up with the idea we brought it to fruition and we got such great response we started the business but I will say the whole time my partner kept saying you're good at this and this is an amazing idea but my engineer partner but why are you not painting and I'm like "Mm, it's kind of scratching my head why am I doing this because I said I would so it stops things, starts things. And when that ended, it was perfect because this just kept coming in and it's been fluid and the business, it just flows, flows, flows. And I think with mediumship and psychic work, you get the next thing you're ready for. You just let it unfold and you just make sure you're doing the work and preparing yourself. Right? Well, you're you're awesome because I just have to tell you, I am the reluctant medium. Okay. I didn't want to fucking do this work. (laughs) I did not want to do this. My grandmother told me I had to, and we're going to get into that in a minute, but I am curious about you because, all right. I ask all mediums and psychics this because it's not been my experience. You said I've always been intuitive and hello, baby kitty. Sorry, viewers for the tail, the butt view, (laughs) not my butt view, but so (laughs) thank God. Different show. That would be a yeah, different, different show. show. Different <laughs> visuals. So I ask every medium and psychic this because it wasn't my experience. So my experience was <clears throat> I didn't even know that I could do this work until well into adulthood. But I was always a sensitive kid. I knew that. So where was it? You said I was always intuitive when you were a kid that you could do things other people couldn't or sense well, things. I would say that you, well, I want to say this, you don't need to have done it or known as a child to do it now, which obviously you're, you're saying I had a kind of, mm, I would say traumatic childhood where I don't remember a lot of it, but as I start to work on the book and the paintings and start to open up and be more open, complete open heart, I start remembering. And as my mother passed, I start remembering a lot more of my childhood and I was always connected to animals and I always had a sense of things a feeling, a gut feeling. Did I use it as a kid? I don't know. But being an artist, I'm, I was always open and making art for me. I, that's how I express my, that's how I process my emotions. So uh, I did always have intuition. I do remember always having it, always feeling like I had the energy going through my body and I was moving with it. Like I, when I would have a traumatic night trying to go to bed or whatever, I would follow my blood through my body and calm myself down and try to capture that energy for animals. I always want to move things with my, my mind, but I haven't done that yet, but working on it. 
no, but I, so I, I have always felt like I had it. And it's just interesting that I never thought I would be doing this though. If you said that, I never said, um, did I always know I'd be painting? Yeah. But, um, or making art, but never, and I never, never in a million years thought I'd be painting souls. And it, and oh. it I never thought in a million years it would come the way it comes to me in the studio. Um, I'm an abstract painter. So there's no rep I'm non-representational always have been. I mean, leave realism to the cameras. I mean, realism is great and I appreciate it. It's just not to be an abstract painter or to look at abstract art. You have to be, I want to say smarter, but you bring more of your, and it is true. Eric Kendall, neuro, neuro prize winning neuropsychiatrist. You do have to be a little bit smarter because you have to bring more of yourself. You have to be more open. You have to bring more of yourself to an abstract work. It's not a boat. It's an, not a lighthouse. You got to do a little bit more top down, bottom up. So yeah. So the abstract part I knew, but I never thought I would be opening and kind of like open vessel and and pull energy in and paint that energy and then let it dictate what colors or values and lines and shapes to complete it to complete a body of work like everything prepared me to complete a painting successfully i have the chops to do it but the other stuff i never yeah and and i it's it started because of my mom but which is which what a beautiful way my mom's beautiful soul started me on this journey yeah. so. and i was just gonna ask did you feel as a young one, did you feel supported by family in your intuition? Uh, intuition, yes, and art. My mom was born and raised in Manhattan. So she loves art. She was going, taking the Crosstown bus to museums. And I mean, she's just a New Yorker through and through. Music, art, style, class. Um, she always says we wear black in New York so we can find something darker. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, so she always supported my art, always. And then the intuition, yes, because she was super intuitive. And so was my Nana, my grandmother, my Nana, they didn't, and my mom would play around and do like tarot cards for people, just like more fun stuff. But yeah, she was, she knew what I was thinking. I mean, she did. We were super connected, knew what my brother and I were thinking for sure. You could not get anything over on her for, yeah. So yeah. And she said, we, she supported me. We found a way to get me to the school, art school I wanted to. And she's was instrumental in my and doing, she's like, what do you want to do? What brings you joy? What classes do you enjoy? That's not like work. And I said, art. And she, and she wasn't always like, oh, you're so amazing. She was critical. I'm nothing if not critical, Robert Hughes. She was super critical, <laughs> but in, in a way that just made me want to be better. Oh, that's the best kind. Yeah. She never blew smoke. Let me, let me say that. Yeah. If that's, good, that's... She'd tell you. If it wasn't, then go work on it. Yeah. That's a Manhattanite for you though, yeah, isn't it? Is. It is. Well, yeah. speaking of that kind of energy, I would love to to move into first. Can we talk about soul paintings specifically, and then animal communication? Because I was the lucky recipient of both from you, and I want to talk about those. But let's talk about soul painting specifically, right? Because okay, so one can say I'm a I'm an abstract artist, but you you create visuals of souls. What? <laughs> How did that come to be? You said your mom? Yeah, but but wouldn't it be beautiful if we just saw someone's energy opposed to all the other things <gasps> that we see in judgment? It would be beautiful. And when when in, in really the beauty, since I just finished the, the 50 paintings, the beauty is going to be to see them all up. I, I that's my like way to go. Um just I'm having a show uh, I'm having a show in January and just to see them up is just going to be like because you look at the work and then you're like, did I do that? I mean, I, I know I did, but it's, it's kind of, I'm just the, I am just a vehicle. But what did you say before that was your other question? I'm sorry. Oh, now I want to back up really quick because okay. for, yeah. for folks who are listening or watching a show in January, 2024. Coming up, I'm going to have a show and just, and where? Like, I need to get the, well, the, these paintings are for the book, Colors of Consciousness. And I need to get these to their, their, the owners. And my clients and like, I'll send you yours because my studio is full and I, that's only volume one. I see volume two, three, and four. Um, oh, amazing. And so they're animals and humans living and already crossed over. And where will this be? The show um, here in yeah. Norfolk, Virginia, because most of that first volume are people here. There are a lot of West coast people and um, I'll try to, I'm going to try to have an online show too. That way people can see it as well. If they're not, if they are on the West coast and or can't get here. Oh, how cool. All right. I, I just wanted to be sure people know that. Okay. Well, I, you know, it's interesting, um, Maria, I, I normally academia wise, I just, I apply for a show. Okay. I'm going to have a show in a gallery museum and then it's one or two years out. Right. Cause they book, 
they're booked about two, three years out. Well, I did this. I just started, I just started painting. Right. And, and then it was 20 and then it was 30. And then I was writing and it was like, I need to, the book is really just a, a platform for the art. And so I never have done it this way. And so I, I start calling museums and like, oh, Miss Harp, we're booked up till 2026. And what the hell you think? And I'm like, right. So what am I going to do? So I'm very open. I love that I'm less academia. My work is still total academia quality. I love that I'm less academia and I'm not worried about, oh, I need to have it in a museum or a gallery. <laughs> and I can just, so there's a beautiful space that's got exposed brick and some beautiful walls that are going to allow me to hang it. Great energy. It's in the kind of heart of our arts district. And I'm just looking forward to try to decide. I just want it to be standing room only. And I thought about doing some interactive where I had the in person or the animal's image. And then you try to match up the soul, which I don't know if there's any way you could, but I would totally give you a painting if you even got like 10, right? But I mean, I would, I would love to do some kind of interactive thing. I mean, I know them all, but I'm deeply connected to, to everyone. I, every, every soul I painted, but yeah, it would be interesting wow. to match them up. That because you have no that. clue, right? You don't know. And I just love it because it breaks down all the judgment. It breaks down all this facade. It just, just puts you in clear energy and color and design and shape and form. And I feel like the the paintings definitely command their own space. My a photographer friend of mine, he doesn't say much. Men don't say much sometimes. But he was like, Nicole, I feel like they're like kind of like throbbing or radiating up. And they, they definitely have energy in life. I mean, the energy translates. So yeah, speaking of again, you're giving me like phenomenal freaking segues, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. I love segues <laughs> like my favorite word anyway. I, you know, I love that word. Segway. Awesome. Segway. Okay. For those gonna... who are watching on YouTube or on Ethereal Network TV, I'm gonna put the painting up right now that Nicole Ooh. did for I asked for me and my grandma to be in this painting. Now, here's backstory. Grandma in this life was, uh, hmm, I think that she maybe would have chosen different sometimes. Okay. She, my mom and my grandma did not have a good relationship at all. My mom would, does call her abusive. My, my grandma was like 4'10", a wisp of a thing, tiny, but you don't fucking mess with her. All right. She's like totally... It tells it like it is firecracker. Okay. Right. Now for those who are looking at this painting up on the screen right now, you can tell <laughs> where and, and grandma. I didn't know that. Okay? I didn't know that. It's like no. first time hearing that. And that's just cool. That is so. No, the one thing that you knew about grandma is her name. That's all you knew. And um, here's what is like mind blowing in this painting. Okay. So she is this burst of red in this painting and it's got lots of like edginess to it that's grandma but interspersed in this red edginess is pink and this is an immense amount of love now when i think of my grandma i remember her coming up to me and squishing my cheeks and saying oh maraquito maraquito <laughs> I love you with her big red lips, red lips. She always had red lips on. Okay. This is a woman in the, in the forties. She was very classy, dressed to the nines. She had these big red lips, always soft lips. And and I just, when I saw this painting, I was like, oh shit, that is my grandma. Now, if you look at the other part of this painting, this big, almost a full circle of blue, when I tune into my own energy, I know that I am blue. I'm always blue. I am a mix of turquoise, of indigo, of regular old blue. That is me. Now, what you wrote, because you don't, you don't just do the painting, you do like this poetry that comes with it. I just have to read this. May I? Is this okay? Oh, yes, please. Okay. Please. Yes, please. You wrote, a tunnel of weaving through oxygen and molecules, your beings intertwine up and up. In the vortex, you become one. Threads of color support the whole, 
you twist and whine. So unique is your space between night and day to exist and breathe, bowing down with grace at the meeting of one another. <sighs> it's, okay. It's, thing. it's like I didn't even write that. It just, but I did. I mean, just cha but channeled, whatever you want to call it. Does that resonate? Yes. Well, I think you can tell. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, now, well, go. Here's yeah. the thing. Okay. Because you don't have this backstory. I, I did not know I'm getting tearful. I did not know that I could do this work. Okay. I was, I specialized in fertility issues and I was seeing a client short story that I didn't tell you. I was seeing a client who was struggling with having lost her twins in utero. Right. So I was doing traditional grief work and her babies came to me, to my awareness. I have no clue what's going on. I'm thinking I'm like psychotic or something. I really, I had no idea what was going on. And fast forward a few years because I ignored it, totally ignored it. I played around with it. I was like, ah, ha, ha, this is a funny party trick or whatever I would play. And I would be like accurate you know? and I'd be like, that's funny. But fast forward a few years, I decided to do some training, some mediumship training. And I was there with other mediums and one gentleman just turned to me randomly. And he said, your grandmother's here. She's saying that you're going to be doing this work. And I freaking laughed my butt off, right? Like, there's no way I'm doing this. And so the way that you talk about this relationship between my grandma and me is like, she's like, oh, yes, you are. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you right. are. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. This twisting and, yeah. and I whine like, oh, no, no. And she's like, you're going to be doing this. So the way that you talk about that, this just the poetry that comes with this painting makes complete sense. And then... If you look at, there's so much I can say, but I will leave this at this. If you look at this painting, I'm getting the chills. Okay. I had a, a recent experience, a vision where I was in a healing bathtub and my grandma was massaging my feet. She was at my feet, massaging my feet. Like she is the groundedness for me. Now look at the painting. She is underneath me, holding me up securing me, knowing she's helping me float. She's helping me rise above, right? Do you have the painting pulled up? I have it on the screen for people, but I'll oh, show okay. it to you oh, okay. right now. Okay. okay, No, no, I know what I'll it looks like. Okay. Oh, okay. you do. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll put it up. Yeah. For people to see, but it's when I, when this, when this came over, it was jarring. Honestly, for me, I was like, whoa, I need to just sit with this for a few days. I love how tuned in you are. I love how tuned. You know, three things make something art: good design, intent, and the viewer's response. So, without that response, it's not. It's you're the mm -hmm. complete. You are the completion of the painting, and even more so. First of all, just that it that resonates so much with you that you're so in tune, and that that it is what it is. That it's so connected to you and something you love so much and so dearly. So much a part of who you are. That yeah. just, I mean, not that you need the validation, but it's so, sometimes it's so freaking good, but just yeah. because, I mean, we're only human and we doubt, but it is just so, I've only had one person say some weird thing about it. So, and it just, when it, when it's funny, you said spark, you said, you said something like firecracker and, and the colors are like red, white, and blue. And my spouse said, 4th of July. And it's just like, it's this energy, right? And this yeah. and pull and. Yeah, that's people, right. My favorite part is the white, the purity yeah. of of that connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it also feels like it feels like trust. Like the the white right. for me feels like trust. This is yeah, yeah. You must trust. And she is she or yeah. I was gonna say she was, but she is. She is a firecracker. She's a bossy little thing. Bossy. I mean, I'm only five two, but I was I right. towered over her. Yeah. Like she. My bossy, mom bossy like thing. That. My mom was very like you could she could like just get you to shoot you down with a look. When it like it's just small, she's like under small. Yeah. 
and just her piercing blue eyes and just with the energy, right? It's that energy. But I love the purity of that. Like I said, that white and that just, I was drawn to the painting after, I, after while painting it. And I was like, oh, I love the complexity and the simplistic, but it's not. And then she kept saying more lines, more lines. And it's funny, people who I paint that have passed will be very, I, I painted two people that have committed suicide and they're very vocal and courageous over and um paula was saying you need to be more you need to bring more expressive get in there paint some music, get those lines in there and it is the only one that is like that i can't wait for you to see them all too and see yourself you and your grandmother in the midst of all of them oh yeah that will be fascinating world. yeah it'll be great well thank see. you for this now i also so thank i want to say thank you for what you what you said and just uh, just for getting abstract art and for for feeling yeah, it for, I, yeah. I can't say that I normally get abstract art, but this I felt not that I understood it. I right. felt it. it there's and, a difference. And, and that is the, it's what is it? art. It's not art unless it brings you to attentiveness and mm -hmm. great art is great because it's ambiguous and you brought the story to it. So if anything too, maybe I'm, and I just kind of had this like thought now, maybe I'm helping people understand abstract art a little more or the ambiguity of life and us right and the beauty too right yes of course the therapist in me is saying that the person who said <laughs> one not so nice thing is seeing something that they didn't want to see like oh shit right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where i'm like oh my gosh i feel seen they were probably like oh my god i feel seen yeah. <laughs> that's scary <laughs> anyway Okay, well, so this is work that you do and folks can go to your website and check it out. And of course, pick up your book and potentially travel if not, if they don't already live there to Norfolk, Virginia to go to your show in January, 2024. That's future for us. But certainly if you're listening in the far future, then it has already passed, but check out Nicole's website, which of course is going to be in the show notes. Great. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to ponder a lot more on this painting, but I just wanted to at least give some commentary before we started the show <laughs> you were like yeah I did a painting for you I was like oh then I'm uh, getting thank to that you. I, appreciate it. I wanted to tell you too it's going to be it's it's at the framer and it's got this like kind of pick it's a gorgeous I frame quality frame once if you don't see it done in a museum don't do it so I, that's how I frame and it's a beautiful floater frame a, like a white pickle kind of white oh, wall, wow. very subtle white frame so it's going to be gorgeous put it right back there on that wall Move those oh, guys. it belongs. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, right front and center. There. Move. This is I all do, I do client. Like it. Oh yeah, yeah. I like how. Well, you except for the except for the mandala on the bottom here, I, that's a cross stitch that I did because I am no artist. Dalai mm. Lama did that for you. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. I just noticed Nicole that you named the painting. Oh my God, you named the painting. You push, I pull. Yeah. I just noticed that. Oh my God, that's so us. <laughs> Yay. Very good, Nicole. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, what? It feels, okay. it feels good. I, I really kind of feel like I needed that. Thank you. Oh my God, that's so good. All right. So now that, now you asked, would I like a painting of, like, who would I like a painting of? My Myself, a loved one. Animal. A, a pet. Yeah. And I chose that, but you do soul paintings for animals too. Obviously, we already talked about that. But speaking of the animal thing, you did a reading for my dear Jakey boy, who we lost in April, 2023. And whoa, I I was, yeah, I was crying <laughs> with that reading. It was, I mean, it really hit home. There's one thing that I have been telling freaking everyone and that is the Calgon take oh, me that's... away thing. <laughs> oh, Jake, that is interesting. That is interesting. Can yeah. you tell about that briefly? What is the, can you just, what am I talking about? So other listeners know. Yeah. So you're communicating with an animal and it's so subtle and when I, it's so, so I'm not going to, I was going to say, just talk about my ADD, but I'm not. But, but it is subtle, right? And so you're, you're looking and you got page after page and you're like, you just want something that, well, you definitely want validating facts, right? For the, for the client so that they, I'm communicating, it resonates that I'm communicating with your animal. But I was just right then, I'm just like, Jake, 
tell me one thing that one thing that only your mom would know. And then he's just like, Calgon, take me away. And um, I'm like, what? I don't, I'm not sure, but I'm just going to write it down because I, that's one thing you do is you don't translate for them. You just literally say word for what they're, what you don't interpret. You just say what they're saying. And I said, well, you sure? And he's like, she'll know what I'm talking about. And I was like, okay. And I just thought it was funny because I was like, well, I don't know if she's part of that time period where Calgon take me away was there, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> no, and but it, I know exactly what it means. Yeah. So, okay. so let me just say first, every medium, every communicator, we all do work differently. And Nicole, yeah. you ask for very just minimal information. You had a photo of Jake and you had his name. And then you do your work on your own and record it and send it later. So I wasn't there to give like, yes, thumbs up. That's a thing. Yeah. Or no, I listened to it later. Now <laughs> I was laughing through tears with that one. Here's the thing with Jake. Okay. Now, unfortunately, poor Jakey boy, he had issues with his hind legs. They, the nerves were not connecting to his brain. So his brain would say, walk up the stairs and his hind legs would go, what? And so he couldn't get up the stairs, up and down the stairs at the end of his life. But he was, he was 11 years old, almost all 11. So 10 and a half years, this baby would follow me to the bathroom, no matter what I was doing. I mean, like TMI stuff or like shower or bath. This, right. this dog was always, always, always in the bathroom with me. Now, of course, for folks who are too young to know what Calgon takes me away is this is a product that was a commercial about soaking in a luxurious bath. It was called Calgon and the commercial said, Calgon, take me away. So it was like this relaxing All adventure. The are gone. Yeah. Yes. yes. Now, Jake would always be there for my Sunday ritual, soaking in a hot bath reading a book, watching one of my spiritual shows, he would insist on being there with me. So that is, oh, that is only something that I would know. Yeah. I mean, my it's, husband would know too, but. It's so interesting how like what, what resonates with you and what, like what I think would be important or what, what you think. Um, but it's so funny how they're funny. Like, and they all have different personalities. Some are more funny, some are more serious, some are old souls. Um, but then he did talk about his um, legs too, didn't he? Or talk about he did. his legs? I can't. Yeah. Yes. Um, you were getting something. I, I, you weren't sure if it was like um, hip dysplasia or arthritis or something like yeah. that, but you knew there was something with the legs. Yeah. Yeah. I don't claim to be a vet, but the body scans are, are helpful. And then sometimes I'll say words like I, I didn't, I wouldn't have known that word, but not for him necessarily, but, but and then the essence of the animals, they're, uh, it, it's, it, well, they're just as diverse as those paintings, right? So I, I, the, the juxtaposition or the duality of what I'm doing is pretty interesting. Like one yeah. feeds on the other, I feel like, or just like this feeds part of my soul and that's another. And then I love people. So I love meeting you. I just knew right away. I could just mm -hmm. sense right away. You were such a good person. And then you mm -hmm. love your grandmother so much. And then I got to know your grandmother just through the painting and you, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. How lucky yeah. I am. How lucky I am. It, it really is amazing. It was, it was balm, balm for the soul. I felt like, not that I, I really felt like we made the right choice, but um, I wanted to know what was happening with my big guy and um, his thoughts around crossing over and, and that kind of thing. And we never did find out who there was something in the reading about a big hand grabbing, like bringing him to the other side. And I didn't know who that was. Well, I, but, should have, um, I should have asked him. I should have asked him who that, who that was. It was a man, right? Okay. It was a man. Yeah. The only one I can think of would be my, my grandpa. And yeah, that's a long story. I don't get to connect with my grandpa very much. And I recently found out why, but it could be, it could have been him, but and yeah, it, it. And they don't have to know the people on the other side, but there's, and that's a good thing too. There's always someone waiting for us, animals or humans, but there's always someone waiting for, for us to help us in the transition yeah. animals yeah. and humans. But yeah, I mean, it, it can be, it can be birds, 
whales. I mean, I just really, it's funny because not random, but from nature and ones I don't know, birds and different animals. And then I've had 24 animals who have crossed over because I, we did a lot of rescue. We had six at one point and they, they'll try to commun- come in while I'm communicating. And I just recently had to, I got communicate, I got information from a, a dog that was with my father and he's like, you need to set some boundaries. And so mm-hmm. they help you. And I don't know if your animals help you in your me- mediumship work. But All the time. They're always with me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I they're always helping. I communicate, with, I communicate with babies and they're like the best energy for oh, babies. Oh, they are the best. Yeah, that, what, a, what a great job. And right, so animals are sentient beings, just like humans, capable of intelligence, love, likes, dislikes, feelings, emotions. So they're just amazingly helpful and insightful. Can you say how communicating with animals on the other side. Now we are going to, I'm going to ask you about on this side too, but can you say how communicating with animals on the other side feels different than communicating with humans who've crossed over? Does it feel different to you? Like you said, everybody does this work differently. I get voice and image and I love that I get images sometimes. Well, I don't know if you don't question my voice anymore, the voice I get, because when I'm working, you're working, but I never question a vision, an image that I get. And sometimes they'll ask me to draw it. It doesn't feel different to me. Most times animals are more contemplative, more philosophical uh, on the other side, but I guess they're, they've done the work or they're doing the work or they've done the work. And you always see things differently when you're there. I assume I haven't been there yet, but well, I maybe have, I don't know, but, but yeah, they you probably have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably have. Um, you see things differently, but uh, they're still, there's they're the same, they're still the same personality, right? The same essence of them. And, and I just love that. And that never changes. Okay. And people always ask, well, can I get, can my animal come back to me? I'm sure they can. And I'm sure they have every intention of doing that. I just can't say they will, because maybe that's not the animal that you need for your higher good, for your higher growth. Mm-hmm. Like you, you always get, you always, it's like babies, right? What um, family that they're born into for whatever their growth is for. But um, you may not get what you want, but you always get what you need. Yeah. That's right. When it comes to them coming back, right? I just wondered if it was different because I connect with animals sometimes, but it's always a human bringing them over with them. Like, oh, I have so-and-so pup or right. cat or whatever. And okay. so I always wondered if they felt any different um, but they don't to me, and that maybe other cool. people would say but that but to me they don't I mean just a soul that's yeah just same soul yeah I always wondered if they feel more ascended than a human or something like to well, me I, animals are just I, well, there are they do have that insight that I think like I said they're a little more philosophical they're a little more enlightened I do sense that yeah it's just a conversation. So I guess I can get whatever information I want. Now, once there has been times where I just wrote and wrote and wrote and I was writing and I'm like, oh my God, who is like, this is, uh, I'm, and more so in the beginning of me starting to communicate, but I got a plethora of different, these are the kind of communications you'll get. And then this dog just like, he was just trying to eat and, and there's so much trying to ease their guardian's pain. It's mm-hmm. all about someone else they are so out of their ego they're such giving souls and it's all about how i can ease my guardian's pain and like the little thing to make you laugh or and i hope that the communications i hope that the paintings bring some kind of solace or some kind of what the word what the word i want comfort (laughs) yes comfort comfort. yeah just some kind of because it is so hard to lose an animal isn't it I mean, I think I was it crying is. in your, your communication with Jake and you were like, oh my God. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm normally more professional. And remember <laughs> the, the doorbell that went at the time? Whoop, time's up. Gotta go. Was that so it? great. That yeah. was like perfect timing. Well, I mean, you had just lost your mom. I, and so yeah. th- things were there. That That's makes true, complete yeah. sense. And yeah. P.S. the Cardinal, you oh, yes. connect the Cardinal to your mom. I connect the Cardinal to my mom, but my mom's still Earthside. And I've always thought, when she passes over, she's going to be a cardinal. But right at the very end, you're like, okay, we're, I don't remember the words you use, but okay, this is the end of the session. And then ding dong, the doorbell rang. I was like, that's perfect. Excellent segue into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, I felt connected to him. Now I, I am an, an owner or person of, of a pet who I felt really solid letting him go. Yeah. I feel like Jake would have stayed here forever if we asked him to, but I knew that 
he was not living his best life. So okay. here was a bonus that you gave. You have students that also that is sent me a reading. Oh, and my, yes. um, yeah. wow, that was so good. The one mentioned he didn't really know what was going on when we were taking him to the vet. He didn't, he was a little confused. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, that is exactly right. He was like, why are we at the park walking? I can't walk that far. Why are you feeding me hamburgers and French fries? Yeah. I don't, okay. Yeah. But there was a moment, there was a moment where he was like, oh, I felt I could see it in his body. Yeah. He was like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll take another Hershey's kiss. Yeah, <laughs> bring it on, bring on my stomachache. I won't feel he's it. Like, he's like, okay. I'm ready. I just knew that he was ready um, at that point, but he was confused. It's I could tell. Just, and, yeah. and she, or he nailed it. I he, mean, yeah. Yeah. So I teach animal communication and they, my students need practice. And I think I asked your permission, right. To, to do that. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember, but oh, okay. it was phenomenal. Uh, yeah. it was so, great. so it's nice. Cause sometimes you can get two communications and they're also different, right? So she has a different feel the way she communicates. It's a lot different than mine. And yeah, it's just so many people. And, and it's interesting to get to, to have students. Uh, do you teach other mediums? Mm -hmm. right. So isn't it great because she was going to be good. You're like, oh, yeah. yeah, let me tap in. Wait a minute. Okay. I'll take you as a student. Not that <laughs> I don't want the ones that aren't because I, and it's so funny because she, Diane, she had so many questions and I was like, oh, I thought you were going to be good. You have so many questions. No, I love that. I love questions, but she's still asking them. Right. But yeah, she was good. And I, I love to see the diverse communications and how people work. And then she had lost her dog Luna. So she really connected. In fact, I think oh, Luna comes right. through and when she's communicating and as a, uh, uh, I was going to say receptacle, <laughs> right? As a, as another, as her, her like assistant help with yeah. Uh, communicating. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. What's funny. I actually got her email before I got yours. And so I'm like, wait, who, I don't know. Who's Luna. Right. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done to me? Where am I? Right. And then I got your email yeah. and I went, Oh, okay. All right. But you actually speak also with animals who are on this side. Right. You yes. communicate with them. Yeah. Yes. What are the kinds of things that you address? So you don't have to have an issue with your animal to, to have a communication. I mean, if anything, the very least, it's going to uh, create a stronger bond, help you live in more harmonious exchange. But like if you have a baby coming into the picture, a new baby, you're moving, there's some pains or some new behavior or some kind of, we can do body scans. If you just want to, I will say having my, it's different and you can tell me how you feel about this with mediumship, but it's different doing your communicating with your own dogs versus when someone, so my students always communicate with my dogs because that's the beginning practice and what I'm teaching them. And I will tell you when I, when they do, I notice right away and you have to be awake and conscious. Like you can't be people who are on their phone, walking their dogs and their dogs. Do it. So I'm awake and conscious and, and uh, I can see the difference after I'll know when she communicated with my animals, cause I will see a difference in how they behave with me. And it oh. is a depth that is created that will last, but I do feel like, I feel like how I, how many sessions I want to get with a medium or a psychic a year myself, I do feel like um, two to four times a year is good because it renews the bond. It renews that connection because we're not always communicating with them deliberately. You know what I mean? We talk to them, but I, but the heart to heart, I use the heart to heart method. There's a couple different methods, but that you will see a difference. You will see a different, we kept, we had her communicating, kept talking to our cat. Why aren't you coming in the bedroom? Where you come in the bedroom? We finally got all the, and I had, it's just different when someone else does it for you for, with your animals. And it's different. It's a different uh, experience, but it's just, and so, and, and then my students like, why is this dog already acting different, differently? And I'm like, everybody wants to be heard. And they're being heard for maybe the first time this way, right? Because it's not a reading, it's a communication. I'm not just reading them, which you could do, but it's certainly not a communication. It's important how they, that you have the conversation with them back and forth. So it can be for anything, um, whatever, and you get 10 questions or 10 topics or 10 ideas or play, things that you want to, that you want to share, um, so I, I'm definitely making, I definitely feel like I make, want to make sure that 
of course, the client, the first, the client is my loyalties to the animal first. There's only been one time when I had a hard time telling the the guardian something where a cat didn't want to come back. It left and mm-hmm. I communicated with it somewhere and it's, I'm not, I'm sorry, but I'm not supposed to be, actually, it wasn't really sorry, but it's like, I'm, the family was wonderful. Don't get me wrong. I just, that's not the family I'm supposed to be with. And it left and didn't, wasn't going to come back. And it was just hard. It was hard. Mm-hmm. To find the yeah. words like that. Yeah, but that's the only one. And but so the answer to your question is there's, an, I haven't listed on my website, but there's a, a million different reasons why we w- would want to communicate. Um, yeah. Well, you just touched on one too that I was curious about that missing animals, like animals that have. Yeah. That's tough work. Yeah, it's tough yeah. work. Yeah. And it's tough mm-hmm. to have an animal missing. And really, there's, I think, animal, there's animal communication to specialize in that because you have to be almost like, in sync with the guardian um okay now g- go left go to the big tree you have to be in 24 hour call on call and it's very emotional it's very energetically charged i've done like two of them um one we found and the other was the one i said that said by the way i'm not coming back yeah so, okay yeah okay. even though you feed me donuts i'm not coming back so yeah so that How was about- sad but now, when you did this reading for me, we happened to be <laughs> fostering kittens, or I was going to oh, start fostering sure. kittens right hero. after that. You're a hero. Yeah, I don't know about that. Seriously, we are now foster fails. That, that, <laughs> no, that's huge. That's such hard work. It really is. It was, it was, it you. was pretty it was pretty difficult and we're not, I'm not done fostering. I really enjoyed the process, but we did end up with two new kittens in our life. And you <laughs> said, I, when I emailed you, I was going to, I asked, wish me luck. Cause this is happening. Yeah. And you were like, I can help with them. I like adjust to a new home. So this is another thing that you can help with. I love doing pro bono work for shelters, trying to, if they if they have an animal that's tough to find a, a match for a home get in there and communicate what's going on what are you looking for what why do you feel it's just interesting just like how pe- they see themselves and how they think other people see them i've mm-hmm. had animals that are like why do why or snakes why are humans so scared of me just mm-hmm. that kind of like they're reading your energy and and don't understand why they're, they're like, i'm not scary to me but yeah to uh, those cats having adjusting to the animals that you have like your two dogs you said it bus. You keep talking, Marie. You get it. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, no, that was great because I think that it just so many people need this work because sometimes we just don't know. And I think that you hit the nail on the head too. Like when I'm teaching folks to connect with spirit baby realm, it's so difficult to connect with your own because you want certain things. You want certain communication and there's a deep emotional bond there. So it's mm-hmm. hard to be as clear with your own, yeah, like my my dogs, I'm like, what the frick do you want? <laughs> right. What she want? Um, but I don't actually talk like that to my dogs. But what I'm saying, it's like. And, well, that's, I think, something you just hit on. It, it definitely uh, communicating with animals has given me a great, res- a deep, great respect um, in my tone of voice. The way I've always spoke, I've gotten more gentle and more my tone. I'll, I'll catch myself and I'll apologize. We're, we work, we're tired, whatever. I wouldn't never, but I used to before not think of it like that before I started like a professional and a communicate. I'm definitely more aware of my space, my energy and my space and their space, I'm respectful of them. We're on an equal footing, so to speak, what, I'm, what I mean. I definitely don't think I'm better than them. And not that I ever did, but even more so now. And they're just so sweet, gentle souls. Mm-hmm. They are. And they are just, they're just, <clears throat> they're, I, I just, I love them so much. I love animals so much. And they I'm so are. proud for cats because cats are, they get the bum end of the stick. I mean, I think the validating stuff, Marie, is fun. But I think the stuff that we don't know we're going to get or the things that the not answer to the questions or just the good growth, the growth stuff that we get from animals what they're here to teach us, what we're here to teach them. I, I love the humor. Uh, just want to tell you something funny, real, real, well, funny story. But so communicating with this, like one of the first animals I communicated with, and I like to ask them the validating question, what's your favorite toy or blanket or where do you like to walk or food? And the animal's like, my favorite toy is a pigeon. I'm like, mm, yeah, it was like kind of cow gone. And um, then I told, and I told, I told the owners and some other things. And um, 
they were like, well, I was like, well, my God, I was just starting out. I'm like, well, I guess that's probably not accurate. They're like, no, Nicole, we raise pigeons. And Wolfie always goes with us to take the pigeons to send them. It's his favorite quote unquote toy, we would say. And then Wolfie, when he passed, we communicated with him and he said that humans use words a lot, but for to use images when draw pictures of me and funny pictures of me. And they had all these the visuals of Wolfie doing this, the Wolfie antics, they called it. And he said to draw pictures, leave a um, sketchbook at the t- or a book at the table. When you go to sit down at the table, if you're by yourself with some whatever, draw the picture, a funny picture of Wolfie and work through your grief that way. They always have tools that are costless, that are cost free, costless, cost for, cost free. They're so creative and they are so effective and they always come up with ideas for, for guardians to things to do. And he said that that would help process their grief better than talking about it. And the family did it. And if you follow through, you'll follow through. Someone else followed through. And you will see a huge, huge change in yourself and the bond and the next animal you get. Yeah, I can't say enough about how lucky I am to to communicate with animals. I, I have to do it every day. I feel like I'm not complete unless I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing work. Beautiful indeed. Amazing work. Beautiful. And you've made, I'm sure, a lot of folks feel comforted and yeah validated too in their own ability to communicate and connect hopefully animals too hopefully i feel like they feel heard yeah 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 can i ask you one question only Um, one only one maria only one that's it that's the limit i promise (laughs) just kidding yes please ask away so we had since the reading with jakey we had a a cat pass away and we don't know why, like what happened. Do you answer questions like, I'm not asking you to do a reading right now. I'm just asking if you answer questions like that. What, uh, happened? what happened? For sure. We could find out. You, yeah. you do that kind of work too. Like Definitely. what yeah. in the world? Yeah. Just need a picture. What happened out of the blue? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can solve mysteries then. Yeah. Like I'm just kind of. And usually when I, I'll get like a first image, so like something like a birth defect type thing or like like the, the heart, like something that's a, they already had. Mm-hmm. Um, your, your cat, I, I'm not sure, please. I mean, but I would go into it more, but I just got a feeling that it was something that they already, so your cat just died like out of the, just. Well, we're not sure what happened. We, my, yeah. my husband found her outside and there was a little bit of blood, but there was no like other indicate, like we have no idea what happened. She was just in the grass. Her collar was off. Uh, And sounds like somebody, something got to her. Don't know. Yeah. Um, Well, I could, I, I, yeah, I don't, I would need to just, I could tap in and definitely ask and see. I'm not asking you to work right now for free but not now I'm, but i mean i could but I'm i mean i could but not here not now but i will say this they are not and not you definitely want to know because you one day she was one minute she was living and the next she wasn't and it's horrible to find your animal that way but they are not uh, so many times owners will say my, my animal was from the shelter and he, and he or she was abused can you tell me something about that and they're just not tied to the group they're not tied to that the um sometimes they don't want to talk about it Sometimes they'll say a little bit and then move on, but they're not tied to that. They are living in the present moment. And that's animals bring us into presence. Um, and that's one of their gifts. If we allow, and if we're, if we pay attention, they will bring us right into present moment. And it's like bringing yourself back to your breath. And that's what they do for us. That's the, they are gifts. They are heaven on earth. I'm so happy to have you on, Nicole. Thanks so much. And I'd love, I just want to circle back to what you said that animals live in the present. And it sounds like when you do your work, you're right there too, square in the present, and you just receive whatever information's coming. I love that so much. Again, I'm just the vehicle and I'm honored to be of service. And yeah, more animals I can communicate with, more soul paintings I can paint. That's while I'm here breathing. I mean, I, I definitely know it's my calling. So, and I think you're sharing. You don't always get to share the response from the viewer. So it's it's nice. It's nice to to hear the, like I said, to finish the finale, to finish the painting, to hear your yeah. response. So that was beautiful. Yeah. I yeah. can't wait for other folks to seek you out and 
hire you for these miraculous services. It's amazing. So I will put your websites up and you're on, looks like you're on um, Instagram and Facebook as well. And lots of testimonials on your site, dude. Yeah. Everybody go check out Nicole. Yeah. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook and harpspace.org, like headspace, but harpspace. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. Maria, thank you so much. You are are a dear. Thanks for joining the Reluctant Medium podcast today. I hope you found some useful information or maybe just a few laughs, or maybe you feel deeply seen. That's my hope. If you'd like to connect with me in any way, you can email me at maria at thereluctantmedium.us. Find me on all kinds of social networks. And if you'd like to connect with others in a free environment, along with myself, consider downloading the Mighty Networks app and searching for the Miracles Happen community. We'd love to see you there. Until next time, my friend, may you be well. Well.